Now we review the 2024 film Inside Out 2. Is that right side in? Ladies and gentlemen, I have seen Inside Out 2. I have not seen Inside Out 1. So I don't know how this compares to Inside Out 1. But Inside Out... I dropped something. I know you want to know, so it's a capacitor from my air conditioning. Yes, Anger would probably love one of these because he's always burning up. Anyway, so Inside Out is it too is the story of Riley, I believe is her name, and she is a adorable girl with beautiful blonde hair and big blue eyes and braces, and she is becoming a tween. So within is the monster. Uh and of course, Riley is inhabited by a group of emotions. There are her old emotions, who apparently were in the first film, and a group of new emotions, like anxiety and embarrassment. And these are the uh, conflicts of puberty that she is suffering as she goes through... Uh, hockey camp? A three-day hockey camp? I don't care about... It. Look, this is not my kind of movie. I mean, we need to make that clear. The animation is wonderful, and I guess the jokes are funny. I didn't need to see Embarrassment's butt crack. I didn't think that was funny at all. But this is a movie about the internal struggle of how a tween who does stupid things needs to get through their life. And, you know... I have worked with mental cases, so on the one hand, I understand a lot of what's going on, but I don't find this entertaining. I mean, you just have to premise that. Everybody else is liking this movie. I don't find this entertaining because, oh, she's going to make the wrong decision. I know she's going to make the wrong decision. That's how the movie works. It's the wrong... Oh, and in the end, okay, everything comes out of... Uh, kitty movie. Kitty movie. The voice acting is pretty strong in this, I think, because the voices are distinct, and that's necessary for this kind of a movie. One of the things about us as human beings is that if you break us down to their our digital components, our simplicity, as cartoons tend to... It's harder for us to look different. I mean, if you look at the Ghostbusters, you've got three white dudes with brown hair and Winston. All right? And then you look at the uh, commercial, or the, the cartoon. Uh, that's one of the reasons they gave Egon that crazy haircut. Because they wanted him to be differentiated from the other two white dudes with brown hair. So they gave him blonde hair and, and made him have this huge weird swirl thing. So he'd look like even more of a super nerd. And, you know, it's then if you look at uh, the other two, Ray and... I don't, don't remember Chevy Chase's name. Anyway, you look at them, it's like one of them's the skinny guy, one of them's the fat guy. But neither of them are skinny. Uh, and neither of them have nearly cool as hair. So, in order to differentiate characters in cartoons, we tend to give them stronger changed appearances... And this is something we should learn to transfer to real life. And this, this is an aspect of this story. The thing there being is that, yeah, okay, you know, the theme, one of the things that happens is the emotions, the older emotions get bottled up. We don't tend to bottle up joy. That's not an emotion that we tend to bottle up. Fear, we bottle up. Anger, we bottle up. That makes sense. But joy is not one of the emotions that we tend to bottle up. And then there's a lot of puns. There's a lot of puns going through this movie. Like, there is a uh, sarcasm, which is a massive chasm within the mind that everything you say across sounds sarcastic. And they dealt with the sarcasm by going around the sarcasm not learning how to overcome the sarcasm. So it's sarcasmic in its nature. 
this particular movie is designed for children. It is about first world problems, and first world problems movies tend to not really gel with me, okay? Let's just be clear that, you know, it doesn't matter what you do with this movie, I'm probably not going to like it because Riley's problems may make a lot of sense to her, but they don't make a lot of sense to me. I don't care about hockey, and I have never been in the position where it's like, oh my god, I'm, I might not make the team. The teams I was on were always so small that you made them, you know? There are the themes of the possibility of losing friends. And I mean, look, I've lost friends. I've lost friends because they went to different schools. I've lost friends because I had a falling out with them. So these are things I know. And, and there, are, there are times in my life that I can relate to Riley's struggle where I did something stupid and my friends were not happy with me because of it. Although, personally for me, more often it was me the one who was being unhappy with my friends for doing something stupid. So it's it's very much this is a part of uh, my life that I did not have these simple problems. I had real problems. I mean, look, when I was 13, I had a 17-year-old uh, mentally ill older brother who would... Uh, have a bad day and decide to take it out on me. And then I would go to school and, and deal with a bunch of, you know, hateful uh, people who hated me because, well, I'm a big, scary-looking white dude. And they were like, yes, we don't need your kind here. Go back to Europe. Okay. And, yeah, okay, I grew up in the ghetto. Riley does not appear to be growing up in the ghetto, and there are no tensions on this level. I really wish I could live in this idealistic society wherein the only thing to worry about is whether or not I'm going to make the team or make the the big kids proud of me. You know? That wasn't a thing for me. When, when I was there, there were the people who were going to hate me no matter what, and there were the people who thought I was awesome. So I can't relate. So for me, this movie just, just goes right down the tubes. It is a low bottom of the watch list film, but then I would never have watched this movie were it not for the fact that I'm a reviewer on YouTube and this movie is here. So if you have kids, they're probably going to enjoy this movie a lot more. I will say that the characters feel underutilized and the movie has a little too much going on. There are Three distinctive plot lines, which is not uncommon in a story, but Riley as a character has really taken a back seat to her emotions, and the primary group of emotions, who I believe are from the first film, are the set piece, with the secondary group of emotions being the B story, and Riley herself being the C story. And for that reason... Mm, I just can't get into it. I mean, I'm not saying I want to know more about Riley, but that's a bad thing. I should want to know more about Riley. Also, there is a big secret running around, literal character called the Dark Secret, running around in this film. And that's probably the one thing I want to hear the most about. But then when there's a Inside Out 3, maybe we'll hear about the big Dark Secret. Anyway, for me, lower half of the watch list if you have kids, middle of the watch list. If you enjoyed the first film, upper half of the watch list. I'm Richard. Greetings, humanity. Once again, Fred the Facehugger here, reminding you to comment, like, and subscribe. And of course you should do that, because if you look, I am wearing two bracelets. These bracelets are from 4Ocean, a company that pulls a pound of trash out of the ocean every time somebody buys something from them. Well, the owner of this channel has pledged to buy one bracelet for every thousand subscribers. And it's a very, very dirty ocean that you dirtied. So, you should help him out and comment, like, and subscribe. Therefore, having him more subscribers so that he can buy more bracelets and clean that ocean. Or, um, yeah, I could fulfill my life cycle and, and hug your face. Don't, don't you want to hug? Come over here. I, I want to give you a hug. I want to give you a hug right now. Yes. 
Yes, come over here, polluting human. Let me give you a hug.